Okay, so, whoops. So explain the ongoing saga with the motors. Well, the first issue, it's always been with the port engine. Initially, it was just, there are so many connectors on these little Yanmars. So the first issue was corrected by just replugging all of the Dutch connectors. And it's probably like 50 Dutch connectors per motor. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So to unplug them all and plug them all back in. Yeah, and all of a sudden everything fixed itself. Then the second issue we had was had to do with the reversing. Yes, so uh, meaning the transmission wouldn't work. So I had to go in the engine room with the earphones on. And when we came into a dock here, would say forward. I'd put it in forward, neutral, reverse. And it's noisy down there. It wasn't very fun. You did a good job. <laughs> Issue with the actuator, which receives scans bus command from the Yanmar ECU. Long story short, uh, we ended up changing the actuator and it works now. Longer story is when Yanmar ECU, which is engine control unit, detects that uh, there's a fault. In this case, from the throttle, the, the gear actuator on one engine, some programmer decided that, oh, that's a technical issue, so we should get both engines back to idle. Uh, of course, this happened to us while we were maneuvering close in, into a, a marina with, when it was windy. Yeah. And of course, being a sailboat, <laughs> that's where you do use an engine. You don't use an engine where you're going between islands thousand miles apart. You use it in a marina, <laughs> trying to get to the dock when it's windy. As soon as we got, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that issue, which was a travel fault on the actuator, it would shut down both engines. Yeah. So it made it interesting until we figured out what the hell was happening. And once you know what's happening, you can always deal with it. In that case, we could go forward, but we couldn't go reverse on one engine. The other engine was still okay, as long as we didn't use reverse on the <laughs> first engine. So we're having this discussion on July 4th weekend, sitting on the boat in Martha's Vineyard. But Pierre had been working on those engines since we arrived in Boston, because the dealer, the Yanmar dealer in Boston, wouldn't come to the boat during the pandemic. Pierre was able to diagnose the problem as a problem with the actuators and was able to have Mac Boring in Maine order the parts from Myanmar. Oh, I woke up at 3 in the morning as I usually do with these problems that you put in your back subconscious. And when I woke up at 3 in the morning I said, well, you know, <clears throat> because of all of the uh, issues that I've had with port engine, only port engine, and the fact that the uh, engine itself and its controls work perfectly, using the remote panel. I knew that the only problem was a question of communications with the actuator for the transmission, which was giving false error back to the Enmar. So uh, it just dawned on me that uh, maybe it's just a question of uh, a complete, complete reset on the system to erase all the error code that were built in the system when there was a transmission shift a long time ago. The simplest solution is usually the right one. <laughs> So uh, since I recalibrated everything, I knew that everything was perfect, but I did notice that it was a slippage when I was recalibrating everything. So I'm just assuming that uh, the calibration is something that can only be done with a complete reset of the system. This is something that I dreaded to do because the documentation I have uh, from Myanmar is, is quite limited. It's very difficult to understand with uh, the menus being different from the display that you get and the condition that you get and the expression being different. Of course, it's all translated from Japanese, so it's never uh, that clear. And so also, you, you said in Beaufort, I could try a complete reset, but then we might be with no motors working, which would be hard to get out of the Well, right that's a discussion I had with France uh, and even Yanmar France. But anyway, so that's what led to the fact that we had partial system operations. So let's get to Boston. And then, of course, at this point, we should be able to get Yanmar. Well, guess what? With COVID, nobody wants to come to work on the boat. <laughs> they all tell you, when COVID is over, we'll, we'll come and see. And, and see you guys. Well, you know, it's not acceptable, of course. We need the engine running just in case we do have an emergency. We do have to move the boat for some reason. This is not good. So uh, I decided to go ahead and do a full reset because worst case scenario, I'm in Boston now and uh, I'll just keep the boat at the dock and, and you know, and wait for the COVID uh, delays to be uh, over. So it took me, I don't know, I think I started at about uh, nine o'clock this morning, more or less. And now it's 12, so it took me three hours to do a complete reset and 
re-enter the parameters, a lot of trial and errors, because like I said, the menu menus are not, <laughs> are not all clear. So it probably took me four or five times of doing complete reset and then rebuilding the parameters to finally have uh, a solution that doesn't generate hard errors and the boot. And where do you do the reset? Because I wasn't here, I wasn't watching you. No, it's just I mean, parameters that you enter in a small on display on there. Display little computer? display like this display about the boat. The screen is about what? And it's very difficult to read in the sun, of course. So that just adds to it. So you enter, you press the enter key, and then you have menus there. You have to enter diagnostic mode, and then you can go in and, and change the parameters. But it's all done with this, and it's really not that easy. So why do you have your computer here? Uh, because I was using a three files, three, four files different on the computer. So I printed what was the most important, and I kept reference back to the computer. Oh, so you didn't have to print the whole manual? Huh? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, And then, of course, I don't have uh, the software nor the cable to connect to this, so I had to do everything by looking at the screen and then trying different functions. Okay. Right now, we are operational. Let's explain the, the buttons on the, on the uh, Glendening display here. Well, depending on the manufacturer, right now, the last time we started was on the right side. So by default, it switches transfer over to the right side. That's where this one is flashing. So if you want the left side to control, you have to press select, then the turn light turns on. And then now this is throttles, which has control. And then, of course, you select forward. It shows that it's switching to, uh, to forward, neutral, back into reverse. You can hear it switching in the back now. And it's, I think, for the right engine. And, oh yeah, uh, you do hear it. And if you wanted to uh, synchronize the engine so that there's no wing wang wing wang between the two engines, you just hit sync. And the right engine is going to synchronize to the RPM of the left one. Troll is not used on this boat. Uh, and the neutral is if you want to warm up the engines without the throttles going. Because as soon as you move the throttle forward, the transmission goes on. And if you hit the neutral, then you can... Right. You have to have me in neutral service. Okay, so if you hit the neutral service like this, now you can open the throttles and set whatever RPM you want and the transmission will not engage. So mm -hmm. it's a good way to start charge a boat using the alternators, which is, of course, you never want to do that, but some people do. Or uh, just warm up the engine. Good. Okay.